This is Red Bull Hardline. I think it's fair to say this is pretty much the most extreme downhill race there is. Now, Blake's already made a video on just how gnarly it is, how fast <laughs> and how big the obstacles are. But in this video, I'm going to talk about just what it takes to win Red Bull Hardline. We've got Sam Reynolds. We're at Hardline. It's not your average downhill race. Uh, have you raced downhill before? Once or twice, yeah, in my whole life, but nothing like this, that's for sure. Yeah, so you're known for hitting some massive jumps. You know, what's this course like to ride? Um, well, I got an invite a couple of weeks ago and always heard of it, always wanted to come check out the jumps and thought, yeah, I'll go ride, ride those jumps. Uh, and I did, and they're awesome. But the stuff between the jumps is like, I can't even explain to you how gnarly and difficult that is. And yeah, that was real a real shock to the system. All right, so we've got Adam Brayton, who's actually qualified fastest. Uh, this isn't your normal downhill race, I don't think. So how do you actually go about trying to ride fast here? Approach is a funny one. It's kind of like, it is a guessing game and every year you come back, it's new. So you just try and just try and be patient and take your time and just pick bits off. So, so in the start gate, you're not firing yourself up thinking, right, I need to go 100% as fast as I can? Uh, yeah, a little bit. I don't know about the other guys, but I mean, quality, yeah, I was obviously keen to push on. There's some good money on for qualifying. So um, yeah, no, I treat every run like a race. I've got Johan Borelli, a French man who lives in Whistler. Hello. So you know how to ride some jumps. Uh, you've raced downhill, but you're more well known for racing enduro. Exactly. So what's it like to race this? It's, <laughs> it's gnarly, man. It's, uh, yeah, it was a really big eye opener for me when I came here. Yeah, man. And um, as soon as we started the practice, I realized how uh, sketchy and gnarly everything was. The jumps are huge. But what's in between the jump is actually uh, what's the most difficult, really. So we're at Trek Factory Racing with Joe the Mechanic. Uh, you're looking after Grey and Mud and Dan Afton this weekend. Obviously, the track is different to a lot of downhill tracks, so massive jumps. Do you change anything in the bike setup for this course? Normally we would do, like in previous years when it has been dry and everything's hard pack, you know, we'd go PSI harder on the tyres and then a few more clicks of compression on the shock and the fork, but this year with it being so wet and technical in between the big features, you need to get that traction, so we're setting up like any other World Cup round that we have been doing this year, so, yeah. So what are the riders' comments? Are they saying anything about maybe, you know, the big heavy landings, the bike's okay for those? That's not been that much of an issue, like as years have gone on, this course has become more ridden in rides more experience on there um, and the main thing that's caught people out this year it has been as I say the bits in between it's so wet and slick out there like you really have to focus all the way down that track you can't just look at all the big features that you need to race the whole track so who do you think is going to win this race this morning we actually saw that there is one section where everybody is kind of struggling it's just before the, the road gap yeah. and if one makes it clear it and pretty uh, smooth and without any mistakes I'm pretty sure he's gonna take the win. Uh, a complete madman, first of all. Like, yeah, these guys are all crazy. I can't believe they just crack on with it in rain and wind and stuff. What do you think it's gonna take to win this downhill race? I think hard lines. It's slightly different to your normal downer track. You know, it's you've got the the track as as hard as it can possibly be, and then this year you've got the rain as well. Yeah. So it's super technical, and then. I think the guys need to put a smooth run together, but also be able to attack because it's not enough just to cruise down and, and get everything smooth, you know. So it's going to be dialed in each obstacle in. There's a lot of obstacles to get right. So, you know, as soon as you hit one, you have to be ready for the next. So whoever gets everything right, smooth run can be aggressive. So this is Dan Afton. He's the evil genius behind Hardline, taking place just near his home. He's a driving force behind the event and the course. Interesting to see his chosen flat pedals, not clips, as we'd normally see him ride. And it's a solid run with some good style on the jumps. The course is starting to get really greasy. It's been a wet week here in North Wales, but the top surface has been drying nicely. The rain is really starting to make it very difficult. Third place for Dan Afton. Last year's winner, Bernard Kerr, is pushing hard and lands almost completely flat on the biggest jump on the course. And a big mistake, this shows just how hard even the parts between the big jumps are. Now to Craig Evans, a really good run. He's known for his jumping skills, but he had a big crash here last year in practice and actually tore the ligaments in his knee, which is a really tough injury to recover from. A big moment near the bottom of the course, almost going over the bars, but not a lot of time lost, and it was good enough to take the win. The biggest victory of his career. Well, that was Rebel Hardline. What do you think, Blake? Oh, it was insane. It was really hard and it's just started raining. 
and I'm guessing it's really wet up there. One by Craig Evans, who actually hurt himself bad last year in this very event. Awesome at jumps, good downhill rider, but all three of the guys on the podium, all their runs weren't mistake free. Uh, yeah, they weren't. They're dabbing feet everywhere, sliding out. And I'm so, so happy to see Dan on, on the podium. One of the builders and you know creators of this crazy course. The evil genius behind he it all. Is, yeah. uh, Bernard Kerr, who won it last year, got third place. Click on this logo here to subscribe if you haven't done already, but you probably have done. Oh, and if you want to see another video, click down here, Red Bull by Numbers. It's pretty insane. I'll try and get everything into perspective for you. Yeah, and over here for Martin Rise Whistler, a brilliant video. Give us a thumbs up if you like this video.